Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, ZTube. In this video, I'll be preparing a schedule of cost of goods manufacture. So how do you prepare a schedule of cost of goods manufacture? First thing you do is you need to calculate the amount of direct material used, the amount of direct labor incurred, and the amount of factory overhead that you have applied, right? Once you have those three things, you can create the schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Now you can uh, prepare the schedule of cost of goods manufactured in a statement form, or you can use the algebraic um, equations to solve for cost of goods manufactured. In this video, we'll do both. So first thing you do is you have to calculate the manufacturing cost incurred during the period, the total manufacturing cost incurred during the period, which is designated by Q. Q is equal to DMU. DMU is the direct material used plus direct labor plus factory overhead or manufacturing overhead. Now, once you have this, you can create the schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Now, how much direct labor you have incurred is easy to find out. You know, labor rate times um, the number of hours they spend times the number of workers you have. The factory overhead can be calculated using the predetermined overhead rate. For direct material used, however, you need to separate out the indirect material and you have to use the algebraic equation or prepare the direct material used statement, okay, or a schedule. So first we are going to use the algebraic equation to calculate the direct material used. Now, depending on what kind of information you have, if you do, if all the material that you have is a direct material, then you're going to use the first equation, which says beginning inventory direct material plus direct material purchases equals to direct material used plus the ending inventory direct material. So in this equation, what you're going to do is you're going to solve for DMU. So DMU is equal to then beginning inventory direct material plus direct material purchases, and you bring the ending inventory direct material on the left-hand side. So minus ending inventory direct material will give you DMU, all right? This, is, this equation is used when you only have the direct material your raw material does not include any indirect material. However, in most cases, you are going to have the indirect material also, right? Um, companies incur indirect material. So if that's the case, then what you're going to do, you're going to have a beginning inventory raw material plus raw material purchases and minus the indirect material that will give you equals to direct material used plus ending inventory raw material. Now you're going to solve again for direct material used. So you're going to bring the ending inventory raw material to the left side. So then it will be BIRM plus RMP minus IM and then minus EIRM. This will give you DMU or the direct material use. Now if you prepare the schedule um, of direct material use, this is going to look like this, schedule of raw materials or a schedule of direct material. So again, in cases when your all material is a direct material, and then you're going to use the schedule on the left-hand side, beginning inventory direct material, uh, plus direct material purchases will give you direct material available. And then you subtract the ending direct material will give you direct material used. That's what we are looking for. If your material includes direct material as well as indirect material, then you're going to use the schedule on the right hand side, which is beginning inventory raw material plus raw material purchases will give you raw material available. And then you subtract the ending inventory raw material will and the indirect material that will give you direct material use. So what you're looking for is you're trying to find out direct material used. So once you calculate direct material used, you can go back in equation one and you can plug in here direct material use, then plug in direct labor, plug in 
factory overhead that will give you the manufacturing cost of the period okay so now we move on to the raw work in process schedule so work in process schedule again first what we are going to do is we are going to use the algebraic equation we have a beginning inventory work in process plus q q is the manufacturing cost of the period we got this from our equation number one right here q is dmu plus dl plus factory overhead foh so we got it from here so beginning inventory working process plus q equals to cost of goods manufacturer plus ending inventory working process what we are doing here is we are solving for cost of goods manufactured so we are going to bring ending inventory working process on the left hand side so that will give you beginning inventory working process plus q minus the ending inventory work and process will give you cost of goods manufactured. Now we can prepare a schedule of work and process. Uh, so again, um, looking at the equation that you have before, beginning work and process uh, plus Q equals to cost of goods manufactured plus ending work and process. So if you look at this, we use beginning work and process plus manufacturing cost of the period which is q will give you total manufacturing cost and then we subtract the ending working process to solve for cost of goods manufactured so if you want to prepare a schedule of work in process you can do it this way uh, manufacturing cost of the period was direct material used plus direct labor plus factory overhead right so if you can also expand this as a beginning work in process plus direct material used plus direct labor plus factory overhead uh, equals to total manufacturing cost. Minus ending work in process is cost of goods manufactured. And lastly, we prepare the schedule of cost of goods manufactured, which is the combination of all the previous schedules that we prepared. So if you look at on the left hand side, um, this statement assumes that we don't have any uh, indirect material all the raw material we have is a drug direct material on the right hand side the statement assumes that the raw material has indirect material as well as direct material okay so let's start with the left side the beginning inventory direct material plus direct material purchases minus the ending inventory direct material is equal to direct material used dmu so that was this statement that we prepared right here is a schedule of raw material, direct material used. And then we have plus we added direct labor and factory overhead. This will give you manufacturing cost of the period, which was our first formula right there. DMU plus DL plus FOH equals to Q. So we got this here in this um, schedule. And then we have manufacturing cost of the period plus beginning work in process minus ending work in process is cost of goods manufactured, which is our third schedule right there. Beginning work in process plus manufacturing cost of the period equals to total manufacturing cost minus ending work in process is cost of goods manufactured. So this statement is a combination of the previous statements that we have created. If you, the, the right hand side statement is exactly the same as the left hand side. The only difference is that we are subtracting indirect material here because we assume that um, that uh, the, uh, the raw material also has indirect material in it. So we have a beginning raw material plus raw material purchases minus ending raw material is minus and uh, minus indirect material will give you direct material use plus direct labor plus factory overhead is manufacturing cost of the period plus beginning work and process inventory minus ending work and process inventory will give you cost of goods manufactured. So this is how you prepare a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. I hope this video helps you understand the schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates.